John chapter 4, and we begin at verse 7. Uh, there is a block of scripture, a paragraph here, that is of immense interest. Jesus is sitting by the side of a whale. He has walked all morning. It's noon. He's extremely tired. Verse 7 says, And there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. She's come to the well where the Lord is. And uh, Jesus said to her, Apparently, she no sooner than gets there. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city. The city's name is Sychar, S-Y-C-H-A-R, uh, to buy meat, to get some food. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto Jesus, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. A conversation is developing. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, Oh, dear lady, you have so much to learn. If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is, in other words, who I am, says the Lord, who it is that saith unto thee, give me to drink, why, you would have asked of him and he would have given thee, listen to this, living water. Living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. I don't see a bucket in your hand. Uh, I, I don't see any means. Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence, that's where, then hast thou that living water. She continues, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well. That well is often called Jacob's well. You greater than Jacob? Uh, Jacob gave us this well, our great patriarch, and uh, he drank of this well himself. Jacob's been here many years ago. He's dead now. And his children and his cattle. Are you greater than Jacob? Verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, this is a dialogue, the woman and Jesus, whosoever drinketh of this water out of this earthly well shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I give, that I shall give, will never thirst, shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him, shall become in him, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. One more verse to read. Then the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water. Give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither, to draw. Obviously, there's some things she misunderstands. We'll cover that in the course of our lesson tonight. A verse at a time. For years, Brother Bagwell's been a verse by verse preacher, teacher of God's Word. Verse 7 There cometh a woman of Samaria. Here she comes. I can envision it down the road. And uh, oh, oh, did I mention this? We know this is the sixth hour of the day, our last lesson. We know this is occurring at noon. 
And yet she's coming to draw water. And notice this, she is coming, no other lady is mentioned, she's coming by herself, she's coming alone. That breaks protocol. That's not the custom. Normally, and it was the lady's job to get the water, normally ladies would get their water, draw their water from a well or a source early in the morning. It hadn't got hot yet. Sometimes it's a long walk to the well or late in the evening. You can be sure that's when most ladies of the city of Sychar, of this Samaritan city, would get their water. But she chooses to come alone. She chooses to come by herself. I think we're going to learn in ensuing lessons that uh, the other women of the city want nothing to do with this girl. She is too, what word will I use? Low down. Immoral. Filthy. Dirty. She comes alone at an unusual time, the hottest time of the day, to the well. What she doesn't know, someone say hallelujah, is that there is an individual waiting for her, and his name is Jesus, and he's the Son of God, and he came to save this world from their sins. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Uh, a necessity of life. She's got to have it to clean. She's got to have it to cook. Uh, got to have it to bathe. But Jesus says something to her. Oh, I got to point this out. Notice who opened the conversation. I would dare say this woman would have never, she knows Jesus is a, is a Jew. We saw that as we read the text. I think she would have never spoken. She would have come, got her water, and begun hiking back up, the, back up to the city. She never would have spoken to him. Uh, in that culture, ladies do not speak to strange men, period. But he being a Jew, and the prejudice between the Jews and the Samaritan, she would have never spoken to him, but he spoke to her. I'll read it in verse 7. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. Jesus opened the conversation. You know when I got saved? He opened that conversation. When I knew I needed to be born again, He's the one who initiated the move. Get, look what Jesus said to her. Give me me to drink. The verb is didomi, D-I-D-O-M-I, give me to drink. Now, grammatically, I'm talking the rule of grammar itself. Didomi here is an imperative mood verb. Grammar makes me have to tell you that Jesus told her, give me something to drink. Give me some water. But I want to quickly add, I will guarantee you Jesus didn't say it that way. I, I would suspect that Jesus in a tone of kindness, benevolence, mercy, and love said, give me to drink. Let me put it in our language. Could I have some water, please? I, I, I'm not so sure he wouldn't have said, I'm thirsty. He said that once on the cross. I know that. I thirst. I'm thirsty. Give me to drink. That is an onion. I read preparing this lesson that in the culture in which Jesus was raised, for a Jewish man to even speak to a Samaritan woman is a S-I-N sin. It's a sin. According to the Pharisees, scribes, that crowd, the Sadducees, Jesus just sinned. But he in God's eyes, did not sin. In God's eyes, he's a soul winner. Give me to drink. I, I, I read this also. To have a conversation with the Samaritan was to invite God to judge you. It was to invite God to send your children into slavery someday when you're dead and gone. That's a threat. Jesus has no fear of that because God did not say that. Uh, uh, I, I read this said to have a conversation with a, 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 a man or a woman who's a Samaritan you just well eat a pork chop or some uh, fried bacon uh, it's the same in the eyes of the Jews as eating swine's flesh something they would never do a, a strict practicing Jew 
And yet Jesus breaks all those rules. Give me to drink. He broke the Jew Samaritan rule. He broke the man woman rule. He, he, broke, uh, he, he broke the, uh, uh, what would you say, religious rule. My, my. By the way, one day he broke the power of cancel sin in my life. Hallelujah. He's the breaker. Micah chapter 2 calls him the breaker. <laughs> and if I die before the Lord comes back, he's going to break me out of the grave one day. My body's coming out uh, to be uh, united and come out as a glorified body. He is the breaker. The breaker. Give me the drink. Verse 8 explains why. Why? You say, wait a minute now. Preacher, you told us his disciples were with him. Uh, why doesn't one of his disciples, they're supposed to be helpers, and why don't they give him something to drink? Verse 8, his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. The, uh, the verb there for buy, it uses the word agora, A-G-O-R-A. -A. In, in uh, Roman life, Greek Roman life, the agora that's the grocery store. That's the shopping mall. Uh, that's the flea mall. That's where you go to conduct business. They're going to buy. They're going to buy meat. Going to buy meat. And the word there for meat does not mean it's red meat or white meat or, or poultry. No, no, no. It is a word that essentially means nourishment. It can be bread. Nourishment. Can be, it can be a portion of honey, nourishment. They've gone to buy meat. May I, may I point out something? It's probably incidental, but I do want to say it. They didn't go, oh, we're religious. Jesus is our uh, rabbi. We'll go beg for food. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. They went to buy meat. They went to buy meat. Uh, there's a little verse in 3 John that uh, when the missionaries went out, uh, they were commanded, the Lord commanded it. John reiterated taking nothing of the Gentiles. Don't beg, don't steal, taking nothing of the... They had gone to buy meat. I wish some of us Christians could learn that. The world doesn't owe us a living. The world does not owe us a new car. The world does not owe us a, a, a new coat on our back. Uh, uh, I am not beholden to the world to meet my needs. I've got a heavenly Father, would somebody say amen, who can take care of all of my needs. I shall not be a beggar out there. Bad testimony I might add. Mm. They've gone to buy meat. Verse 9. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him. I want you to notice something. Uh, initially, I think she had a little bit of an inhibition. No, oh, no, I'm a Samaritan woman of all things. I shall not speak to this Jewish man. But uh, Jesus has spoken to her. And uh, his speaking to her gives us the gives her the peace, the assurance. I can respond to him. I can respond to him. This is what she said. How is it? Can you explain something to me? How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest me? I think it's the likes of me for a drink. Notice askest, asketh. A-S-K-E-S-T. It's actually a present. To you are asking me for a drink. Give me a drink or give me to drink. It's an imperative move verb, but she didn't hear it that way. She didn't understand it that way. Jesus has asked her politely. Jesus has asked her with honor and respect for a drink. We don't have the right to go around demanding things of everybody, but we can be kind and gracious and gentle. I'll need an amen and well manner. Notice the first word she spoke to Jesus. How? How is it that you being a Jew ask me for a drink of water? Does anybody remember John chapter 3, last lesson? Does anybody remember Nicodemus' first word? Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus said, how? Same word she used. <laughs> how is it you're asking me? You're a Jew asking me a drink. Nicodemus, be born again. How? How? How can a man enter the second time into his mother's womb? Uh, uh, and then later in the conversation, how can these things be so? 
How? How? And again, I think I'll say this. The big question is not how about salvation. God's design, the plan. The big question is the who of salvation, Jesus. But she's going to find out about the who, the Lord, and very soon. How? How? <laughs> Have you asked me of drink? Just a woman of Samaria. Then she continues. For the Jews have no dealings. The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Uh, the word there for dealings comes from a little verb that means to receive alone. We don't have commerce together. We don't have social interaction together. We, uh, there is no... The Samaritans, and I mentioned it in a previous lesson, they are not thoroughbred Jews. There, there's some Jews scattered throughout Samaria, but for the most part, they are of mixed race. For the most part, they're ungodly, filthy, low-down heathen. Uh, the Samaritans who followed their national uh, religion, they believed in Genesis through Deuteronomy, but none, no other portions of the Bible. They did not believe in worshiping in Jerusalem. They had built a temple of their own on a mountain called Mount Gerizim. All this will come out uh, in, in the discussion eventually in future classes. And uh, Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus, again, is crossing a cultural barrier in order to win somebody, in order to win somebody to Christ. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God. Oh my, we're in verse 10. Someone, as I studied, called verse 10, maybe the most important verse in chapter 4. That same commentator, commentator that same writer said that verse 10 might be the second most important salvation verse in the entire Gospel of John. He put John 3.16 for whosoever. Uh, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him. He put that as number one. He said verse 10 here might be the second most important. I would put it third. Uh, John 5.24 comes in number two for me. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believes on Him that sent me hath everlasting life. That's a step-by-step -step recipe. For I get an everlasting life for being born again. Two things in verse 10 we have to note. Lady, if you knew the gift of God. Number two, and if you knew who was talking to you. Class, I want you to look at verse 10, either in your Bible or, 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 or jot it down in your little notepad. If you only knew, number one, the gift of God, and number two, who it is talking to you saying, give me to drink. Preacher, who is this gift of God? Here's my answer, and I believe it firmly. I believe the gift of God here is none other than the Holy Spirit Himself. I found three or four places, in fact, you can find them in the book of Acts, where the Holy Ghost is called the gift of God. The gift of God. I think Jesus is talking about could I make an announcement? Could I hear an amen? You can't, Jesus is trying to get her saved. Jesus is trying to lead her to the Lord. You can't get saved without the Holy Spirit. He's involved in the conviction process. He's involved in the loving and the wooing and the drawing unto Jesus process uh, uh, until you know the gift of God. If thou only knew the gift of God and who it is, that's talking to you. See it in verse 10. Who it is that saith unto thee, give me the drink. You got to know the Holy Spirit. You got to have some kind. And then you got to know, let me put it this way. You got to know who Jesus is. There's a song. I dearly love it. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. He's God the Son. He's the Son of God. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior. Hallelujah. And by the way, before this account ends, before uh, John chapter 4 segues into its next event, this woman's going to know the Holy Spirit. 
<laughs> and this woman's going to know the Lord Jesus Christ in the full pardon of sin. She's going to know who it is, who He is. Oh, if you knew the Holy Ghost, if you knew the gift of God, oh, oh, oh. First thing Jesus said to her, give me to drink. And now He says to her, if you only knew the gift of God, gift, give, Jesus begins with this lady with the language of, uh, somebody write this down, with the language of grace. Give me some water. He didn't talk about buying water. Give me some water. If you only knew the Holy Ghost, if you only knew the gift of God, gift, giving, that's the very, that's the very vocabulary of grace. G with Nicodemus, Jesus went about uh, talking to him about uh, salvation in a totally different way. Ye must be born again. There's some things in Nicodemus' life that have to be straightened out. He has been brought up understanding some wrong beliefs. Nicodemus has been taught you can work your way to heaven by keeping the law of Moses. Jesus has to emphasize truth. Truth with Nicodemus. Mm. With this lady, oh, when she finds out who Jesus is, that's truth. When she finds out about the Holy Ghost who guides us, teaches us all truth, truth will be here. But he doesn't start with truth right here. He starts with grace. Give me some water. Almost as if to say, if you'll give me some water, and that's a token of grace. That's a learning to uh, the very principle of grace. Give, give, give. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. Give me some. And then if you knew the gift of God, God's got something He wants to give you. He wants to say, He wants to give you salvation. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you a mansion in heaven. If you knew the gift of God. Talk reminds me of the verse we had in John chapter 1. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth Came by Jesus. With Nicodemus, Jesus hits the truth real hard. Needed to. Had to to straighten him out. And with this lady, hits grace. He doesn't know a thing about grace. Hits grace real hard. Had to. For by grace are you saved through faith. Lady, if you only knew the Holy Ghost, if you only knew the gift of God, if you only knew, Jesus says, who I am, why, you would have asked me. You would have asked me for water. <laughs> and I would have given thee living water. Living water. Now, preacher Bagel, what does that mean? Later in John chapter 7, we will study it, God willing, verse forever. Living water is a picture of the Holy Spirit again. The Holy Ghost uh, of an almighty God. And, uh, and uh, that if you'll believe on me, if you'll trust in me, I'll put the Holy Ghost in you and out of you will flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost. Oh, ma'am, if you only knew, you'd be asking me. And if you ask me, I will give you living water. The word there for living, the root of it is zoe, Z-O-E, and it means life on the highest level. A Greek teacher teaches it this way. A life on the highest plane. <laughs> you will be given living water. Verse 11. Verse 11. The woman said unto him, Sir, notice all the way through this dialogue, this conversation, she has respectfully respected. Sir, that, the word sir there is kurios, K-U-R-I-O-S in Greek. It can be translated Lord. Lord. It's a great term of deep respect. Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. You, you, you don't have a dipper. You don't have a bucket. You don't have a... And the well is deep. From whence, that means where. From whence then has that word in the world you're going to get living water. She is responding on a natural level. The natural man doesn't comprehend the things of God, cannot, uh, uh, but she's on her way to understanding some spirit. She's on her way to Holy Spirit conviction. Sir, uh, you, I don't see anything in your hand to draw water. And, and this well is deep. Oh my, what an understatement. This well is deep. And uh, uh, 
you say, preacher, uh, I've never been there. I, I don't know exactly how many feet deep in all my reading in the commentary. I'm not, but the lady, this well is deep. Isaiah talks about the wells of salvation. Would you let me go this far, class? Jesus is sitting there by one of those wells of salvation. He's sitting there waiting on that girl to come so he can tell her how to be born again. Wells of salvation. And the well is deep. I'd say the well of salvation is deep. You know what Jesus had to do to provide salvation for you and for me? I'll tell you what our Lord had to do. He had to go to the cross of Calvary. He had to plumb the depths of sin to die for uh, us to be born again. Oh my, the deep suffering He endured there. Uh, the well is deep. Verse 12. Are you greater than Jacob, our father? who gave us this well and drank. Are you greater than his and his cattle drank from there? Are you greater? Oh, soon when she gets saved and goes back to town, she's going to say, I found the Messiah. I found one that's told me everything I've ever done. I found one that's the Lord of life. I found one that's greater than Jacob, greater than Abraham, greater than Moses. Could I get an amen, please? Mm. Mm -mm. Verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water out of the well will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give shall never thirst. Shall never thirst. Let's talk about that for just a minute. Preacher, you just said if you get saved, you will never thirst again. This is what it means. You will never unsuccessfully search uh, thirst again. It, it means you will never without uh, without your thirst being slated, thirst uh, again. You say, wait a minute, preacher, you're leaving open the possibility we will thirst again. Oh my. Uh, 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 what was it the psalmist said? Uh, said, I'm like a little deer by the water brooks. I'm panting. I'm thirsting. I'm, th I'm telling you what, I've been saved. I've been born again years ago. I got saved. I got a, I got a deep uh, drink of that everlasting water. I've never thirsted again for Jesus. He's living in me. Never thirsted again for the Holy Ghost. He abide. But at the same time, as the same token, I'm here to tell you, today I'm thirsty for the Word of God. Today I'm thirsty for more truth. Uh, uh, like that deer, by the way, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty for the good things of God. Don't feel like I know all I want to know yet about my Savior. Psalm 63, Oh God, they call it the morning psalm, the Jews. Psalm 63, verse 1. O God, uh, thou art my God, early do I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. Uh, as if in a land where no one, I'm thirsty, thirsty, thirsty for. You'll never thirst again, period. You'll be saved. But you'll always have that hunger. Uh, you'll always have that thirst. When the disciples finally got back with, with something to eat, with the, with the meat, with the nourishment, Jesus said, fellas, I, I'm, I'm soul winning right now. I've got meat to eat you know not of. Well, Jesus has got water to drink. This girl knows not of the water of the good Holy Ghost of God. You'll never thirst again if you get saved. Hallelujah. I don't need to get saved a second time or a third time. Once does it. The permanency, the security of our salvation. Verse 14. But whosoever drinks of the water that I'll give him, he'll never thirst. The water that I give him, uh, it'll be a well of water springing up. Springing up. Uh, the word there is leaping. It's a Greek verb. Leaping up. Leaping up. Uh, bubbling up. He'll, she'll have a well of water springing up into, watch this, ever lasting life and what in the world does everlasting life mean it means a life not only that never ends everlasting ionios it, it is a word that means uh, it'll always be full it'll always be meaningful there'll never be a moment of boredom hallelujah in jesus i am supremely and eternally satisfied that does it verse 15 the woman said sir give me this water. She's not there yet. She, she, she's not comprehended it all yet, but she's, uh, she's gone positive on Jesus. She's hungry for faith. Give me this water that I not thirst again. I want it. I'm interested in it. 
and neither come hither to draw. See, she doesn't fully understand. I won't have to come to this well again. Sir, give me this water. She's taking another step toward Jesus. Another step toward salvation. Notice, this thing began. Jesus said, give me something to drink, lady. It ends with the lady saying, give me something to drink. J 